Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides and this course is Principles of, or Rules of Macroeconomics. We are still in chapter 10, Measuring a Nation's Income, and we are going to look at the definition of GDP. Remember that GDP or gross domestic product measures a nation's income and expenditures, that there are two parts, the participants and the, and the or households, and then there's also the firm or the business, and that the income must equal the expenditures or else we're in a disequilibrium state. We know that GDP measures our economy. If you watch the evening news, you will hear from time to time, especially in the business segment, that GDP is up or down from, and then they will give you a timeline or a statistic. Later, we will interpret that phrase, but for now, let's understand what GDP is. By definition, GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Let's dissect this definition so that you have a better understanding of what gets counted so that we have an accurate depiction of the measurement so that we can then say this is why the account we can say that this measure this is a good measurement or a not so good measurement of the economy the first portion of this definition that we will look at is market value anytime in economics you see market value replace it with the word price that's all market value is it is the price the next portion of this definition is final there are two types of goods and services. There are final goods and there are intermediate goods. Final goods are the goods that are sold directly to the final consumer. Intermediate goods are goods that are taken by a firm and then combined with other factors of production to produce a different product. For example, if I have flour, eggs, sugar, baking soda, each one of those by themselves can be sold individually to the consumer. But if I put all of those together in the right combination, add heat, I will eventually get a cake. GDP, when we're calculating GDP, we don't count the eggs, the flour, the baking soda, the milk, unless uh, especially if it's a part of, excuse me, if it is a part of the end product, which is the cake. The, they are then considered intermediate goods, and the cake is the final good. Now, we have to stress final because if we count both the cake and the ingredients, then we are double counting, which is a problem with measurement, GDP measurement, and it will overstate the GDP. So to prevent that from happening, we don't count the intermediate goods that made the product, we only count the final product. The next portion is, the, um, by definition, goods and services. When we talk about goods and services, we are talking about tangible items that you can buy, and then we're also talking about intangible services. The tangible items would be shoes, handbag, clothes, food, those, those kinds of items. The intangibles or the services would be like tax prep, preparation, you know, end of the year before the fifth, April 15th. It would include maid service. It could include um, having your car washed or detailed. Um, it would also include the education that you receive when I stand before you in the classroom. That's a service. What is not, what we have to understand and appreciate is that when we talk about goods and services, we are talking about above ground, not underground economy. For example, underground, um, when you are at the barber shop or the beauty shop and the, the people come through to sell uh, bootleg CDs, incense, socks, handbags, cologne. If you buy those products, that would not get counted in GDP. 
Same is true for individuals who will hire uh, immigrants to come and work in their home, either for um, as child care providers or as housekeepers. And if they pay them off book, off the book, that would not get counted in GDP. Think of it this way. If you can tax it, it gets counted. If you can't necessarily tax it, it might not get counted. Not all things, but uh, uh, as far as underground economy, then it would not get counted. Produced here just means made. It has to be made. It can't be a thought or an idea. And then within a country, within the geographical borders of that country. So if we were talking about the GDP of the United States, it would be the continuous 48 states, the mainland, and Hawaii and Alaska. So anything made in the U.S. would be counted in GDP, whether it was made by U.S. citizens or by foreign immigrants, legal immigrants, it would be included in GDP. If it was made in Mexico, it would be, it would be included in the Mexican GDP. If it was made in China it would, and sold here, it would not be counted in the U.S. GDP. It would be counted in the Chinese uh, GDP. And then the final piece of the definition in a given time period, because we can't keep counting into uh, infinity, we have cutoffs and the limit is usually one year. Sometimes it is uh, calculated quarterly. We have now completed the definition of what GDP is. Our next segment will look at a formula that helps us to better understand how to calculate GDP. I look forward to speaking to you then.